Hey, you guys, what's going on? <laughs> Did you guys get it? Hey, and you? Oh boy, today could be a little punny with some sheep humor. Welcome back here to Quick Street Corner for another episode here on the Farm Sim Simulator Network Experience. And today we're going to be talking all about sheep. Well, in a little bit we're going to be talking about sheep. We want to thank you guys. We're close to 100 subs already on the YouTube channel. It's huge. We're going to do a huge push this month for the rest of the month with any uh, farm simulator stuff. And hopefully we'll get some other videos out there. But for you farm simulator network players, if you guys aren't subbed yet, I know there's thousands of you guys still out there that haven't. If we could push over 100, and we, we'll do a special giveaway, a couple... Uh, no, we're going to be giving away lots of FSN dollars coming up. If we hit 200 by the end of the, the May, we will do $100,000 of FSN dollars. So as I said, today it's all going to be about the sheep. And unfortunately about how here at Quick Seed and Feed, we are going to be getting rid of the sheep on our farm. Uh, there, there's two, two reasons on why we're getting rid of the sheep. Uh, first reason is it's they're a lot of work. Uh, animals are a lot of work, especially on a 24-7 FS19 server. You really have to be on top of them, especially during the spring, when it, which springtime is already very, very busy. They, Because that's the only time that they breed, and that's the only time that they produce wool. So... It's also the time when I'm planting, plowing, liming, fertilizing. So there's a lot of time. And also, we have found out that our server here, uh, Madison County, is getting a little bogged down. So there's, there's a couple things that are contributing to that. I mean, other than we usually have about 10 people on our server at any given time, because we are one of the more populated and popular servers here on FSN. But we also have the most vehicles out of, I think, they're up to 50 servers now? Or they're over 50 servers. But we have the most vehicle ownership. So, a few of us on, on this server, Jason and myself, we are trying to lower our vehicle count. Jason, more than others, he has like three times as many vehicles as I do. But still, sheep, I calculate it requires about six dedicated vehicles that I have that I have no other purpose for. So this is going to be our last springtime. Yes, it's spring. I know there's lots of snow on the ground and we're trying to deal with that, but I'm going to let them go for one springtime here and we are going to collect all the wool, try to make as much money as I can, and then we're going to do the painful part of driving 250 sheep all the way back to the animal dealership and hopefully we can make a little bit of money as we move on and figure out what we're going to do with this plot of land which doesn't have a lot of arable fields on it. So right now we're just going to kind of take a walk through of what I have to do on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, especially in the spring. I mean, I got my chicken coop over here on the side, which we're keeping the chickens because uh, they're very easy to do. Just drop some wheat in there and away you go. You pick up eggs. I, I have two pallets in over there, which picks up eggs all year long. Once a year, I just drive them up to the cell point and we're good to go. Sheep, on the other hand, they go through lots of water. So I have 250 sheep right now in this one pen. And I would say at least once a day, I have to fill up this water tanker twice just to drop off some water here. You can see my, my lovely placement of the hayloft here has really messed up the driveway. So that's another issue that I'm dealing with. It's just a pain to drive up and down this bumpy road here. But without the sheep, I'm gonna be able to get rid of this water tank that I'm hauling around because it serves no other purpose on my farm. Not only that, the, they feed on grass, grass or hay. So that means I have to have a lawn mowing operation going on. And the only way you can store anything long periods in this hay loft is with hay, you can't store grass. So I have to keep an eye on the weather, make sure that there's plenty of time for grass that I cut will be dry enough that I can collect either in hay bales or just collect it loose 
in a separate trailer, which I also own. Uh, some lawn mowing equipment, which I kind of rent from a neighboring farmer from time to time. I was going to buy my own, but now I'm not going to worry about cutting grass, which this field over here on my left is all grass. We're not going to worry about taking care of that anymore. Uh, that's less bales that I'm going to have to make or just just lines of drying out grass sitting here on the server. So that's going to alleviate a lot off my plate, which is just fine by me. Um, and all that hay, they, let's see here, we went through that pretty quickly, but in one given year, 250 sheep will eat over 200,000 liters of hay. That's, that's a lot of hay. That's about three quarters of uh, field 102 here on Madison, which is a straight grass field. Thank you, Gmail, for that email alert while I'm recording. <laughs> right now, we're just going to dump in some of the hay here. We're going to go pick up. This is the worst tractor to be pulling a big IT runner, especially once we get it filled with hay. This little New Holland is already struggling with, with it in the snow. I think we're going to we're going to clean up the area first because there's some grass there. Because these sheep, they make a ton of mess. And as you can see, off to the right, we already got a couple pallets of wool being created. I have to make sure I get them out of that, that area so they keep producing wool. So that, with the right type, type of sheep, that fills up in about two and a half hours. I've had it fill up in two and a half hours. So I have to have someone here pushing them out of the way, just kind of what we're doing right now. I'll just push the full ones out of the way and then we're going to clear out some of the snow here. And this is pretty much what I do on the first day of spring. And this is, this is a good hour of getting this prepped after the winter time. And that's on top of, what, probably four hours of other farming chores that have to be done on the opening day of spring. All right, so we're on mid-spring here. Before, while we're waiting for the map to load up, I want to show you a current event that's going on here at FSN. It's the first responder event going pretty much through most of May here. So you have to pick a side. Well, you got to pick a team. The medical, police, or fire team. And then right here on the webpage is emergency calls that come across. So you have to put in a transponder code, and then there's a quick math question that you have to fill out. And then... That counts as a completed call, and at the end of the event, whichever firefighter, police, or medical team has the most finished calls, completed calls, they will win certain prizes at the end of the month. Now, I kind of blocked out what was completed there, so you guys can't judge, because there is one team that is kicking some serious butt right now. So here we are. It's... Actually, it's late spring here, and if we're going to push some more of the wool out of the way, because we're going to start loading this up onto a trailer, which onto our gooseneck trailer, which also is not going to be needed at the end of this. And once we get these out, um, we are going to start driving these up to the sell point, which is going to lead into the other pain in the butt part of dealing with sheep. Not only using the forklift and trying to stack these things neatly. But when you take it up to the sell point, oh, you'll, you'll see it later. It, it's a it's a whole fiasco d to deal with the people up at the sale point with pallets of wool. I have I don't have issues like this with my eggs, so I don't know what's going on. But that was one of the deciding factors on why I'm getting rid of the sheep here. All right, so I did sell off a, a bunch of the sheep already, so we're already down to 205. I already sold off the the dorpers which produce no wool. They're just straight meat. So we already got rid of all of that. And look at, look at this mess. There's, I cleaned this up last night too. These sheep, I mean, you would think they're pigs. All over the place.
Now when we drive the rest of these sheep down to the animal dealership to get rid of them, we're going to be running a larger animal transport vehicle. I already sold off, I had a small little thing that attached to my IT runner, which handled, I think I was able to carry six sheep at a time. I was not going to do that for all 200 plus sheep. It would, I'd be driving up and down Madison for hours. Actually, let's, uh, now we're going to take care of the chickens area real quick, which is real easy to do. They don't take a lot. You don't make a lot of money off of them, but just the simplicity of it, it's, it's a nice little side business and it handles almost all my fuel costs. So we will keep these guys around. All I do is back up to this trailer, hook it up dump in the weed or the barley and away we go Play this is empty so we're gonna take this up and get this filled up and uh we'll do some more sheep business here in a little bit all right so here we are we're back it's early evening here on late spring and we are going to get our truck here and we're going to haul this bad boy up, which I might actually be trading this truck in. If you watched the earlier video where I was discussing the May mods, they've added the 2020 Ford F-250 and F-350 with a ton of features. So we might trade in this Dodge for this. Uh, for right now, we're going to haul the wool up. So we're going to drop off our snowplow. We don't need that anymore. And I thought I had some video of me loading up pallets. I don't know what happened to it, but instead we have a almost fully stocked gooseneck trailer of wool. And we're going to drive this up to Miller's, which is actually just across the street, so it's not too bad. But the, the worst part about selling wool, even on this low trailer, you're, you're about to see. see. Let's double check the price here. Okay, it's almost towards the maximum, which I think is maximum on the the animal page or the season's info page is about 800, so we should be okay. I'm probably going to sell the eggs then tonight. Let's just double check. Okay. We're good here. So we got our straps on so we don't lose anything. We don't want to have to pick up more stuff with the forklift. There we go. Now you can actually hear the truck. I must have had the volume settings down when I was watching something on Hulu or Netflix or Disney or, or some one of the many streaming services that we have here. Here's just gonna be the nice quick trip. We're gonna make ourselves a right here. And bam! Miller's. Not too far away. Which is good with the eggs, because I just put them on the small track tractor trailer, not tractor trailer, just a small tractor. And I drive them up here one by one. But what you think would happen as soon as you drive across the cell point right here. We should start selling wool and making some cash. But that's it. That's as much wool that usually goes away when I drive across it. Which is a pain. So we do a little bit of a rocking technique here. All right, we got a little bit more. Not too shabby. But we kind of hit ourselves a dead end here. Even lowering the trailer doesn't do any good. I got a couple more. So I'll show you what we have to end up doing here. I don't know if this is a glitch on this map, because it happens at the other cell point on the south end of this map. And that was a pain because I did not have extra vehicles near me that was able to help me out with what I'm about to do here. Alright, let's go get our new Holland. Let's 
just enough of an annoyance that is making me not want to breed and harvest sheep in this game anymore. At least not in a FSN environment. Alright, so all the straps are off, that's good. I'm gonna spin ourselves around here. to do is we're gonna push everything off of the back of this trailer here and that still doesn't help you get these pallets on the ground on top of those grates you would think fine everything would sell nope there's still a couple steps to this process here Got a couple of them to sell that way. It's very rare that happens. Okay, now we just have to drive into them. And you get a couple more that way. You have to squish your fork on top of it. Drive on top of it. Just manhandle that wool. And eventually, after a couple minutes, you'll have all your wool sold. And then you can go back, al go back along to whatever you were doing before. You guys can see this is this is a pain. This is, this isn't normal. Well, this shouldn't be normal. I mean, we're making some good money. You know, that was a lot of wool. That was still not the highest wool output that I had a season. I had, I had that trailer at one point double stacked, so it was about 21 pallets of wool. This is I, I can't watch this anymore, but let's move on to the next portion of abandoning the sheep All right, so now that we got all the wool pallets straightened out We are now hauling the big Tex, the gooseneck trail here on the back of my Dodge pickup truck down to the shop we're gonna end up selling this and Renting a larger animal transport and we're gonna start hauling away all the sheep So I think we're up to the 205 sheep at this point after I sold off all the dorpers, which was just the the meat portion of the animal pen there. Alright, so we ended up selling that. We got a couple dollars back. And we're going to lease this bad boy, which is going to hold 14 sheep. So that, that beats the 6 sheep that I had in my IT runner uh, attachment. That would have taken a lot longer. So, nice quick hookup. Alright, let's head back up north and get rid of all this sheep. Alright, so fast forward here, we got our first load here. You can see how neatly I have them stacked in. Don't worry, I didn't do that. They're, that's how they put it, themselves in there automatically. All right, so let's kind of speed up through a couple of these 12 trips that I'm gonna to have to end up taking here.
All right, so that was one quick trip and a pickup of another one, but we're all done here. We got a little bit of cleanup here. There's still some grass, but I sold off the pen. Everything sold off. I have a few, maybe a few vehicles that I still need to get rid of that I was using for sheep, but let's kind of take a look at uh, what I ended up making here. Actually, I, I was kind of su surprised at how much money I made by selling off all those sheep. 82,000. That's not too bad. I mean, I could have easily just went into the animal pen and sold each one by clicking and not driving them down, paid the $100 per animal uh, for the transport fee, but that would have been over $20,000 of revenue lost there. So that was a no brainer just to drive them down. It, it wasn't too bad of a trip. I think overall it took me about an hour. So that's about it. We're going to jump in here. We're going to take care of those random wool pallets that I kind of missed. We'll make a few dollars here. But that's kind of closing up the sheep operation here on Quick Seed and Feed. Like, thank you guys for watching one of the longer videos here on the FSN Experience uh, playlist here. If you like what you see, you want to see more of it, remember to like, comment, and definitely subscribe because we're closing in on 100. If we hit 200, we're going to be giving away lots of FSN dollars to all the players that are subscribed here. So, thank you guys once again. Until next time, peace out.